Move over, AMD and NVIDIA. There's a new GPU down and they have a feature you don't. And finally, somebody made my dreams real with AMD Quantum and We've got 4080 benchmarks to talk about. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. And I wanna say today, the thing that I am thankful for is legitimately stable electricity access. This is something that I grew to tremendously appreciate in my time in South Africa, having stable electricity every day on demand is a modern marvel and I love it so much. Let me know what you're thankful for down below in the comments and I'm gonna let you know that there's a new GPU manufacturer coming to town over in China with them unveiling their newest generation of the gaming card, the MTTS80 coming out from more threads. This is something that we've actually been hearing about for quite some time and it actually looks to be a decent entry from another GPU manufacturer. Whether or not it's gonna hit Western shores is unlikely, but there are some details about this graphic card that not even AMD, NVIDIA, or Intel actually have. So the MTTS80 has a lot of features that we can talk about. 1.8 gigahertz, 16 gigs of GDDR6 RAM with half a terabyte per second memory bandwidth, supports DisplayPort 1.4a, HDMI 2.1, all of that good stuff. And it's actually a fairly decent looking GPU, but it actually is based on the MT Unified System architecture, which is a little bit different than how all the other GPU manufacturers make it and it can run up to 14.4 teraflops, which is firmly a mid-tier card. RTX 3060 Ti, RTX 3070, maybe. The ARC A770 is somewhere in the neighborhood of 17.2, so teraflops don't necessarily always equate to performance, especially when there is a new architecture that's actually being brought out. So it remains to be seen what the gaming performance is like, but they did show off some gaming performance during their actual showcase of this graphics card. Number one, I just want to say that this is a solid design. Number two, uh, they do have something that no other GPU manufacturer has, and that is PCI Express 5.0 interface. So it was actually confirmed that AMD is not even bringing PCI Express 5.0 to the 7900 series GPUs, and that will actually be PCI Express 4. But what we have here is uh, the first Gen 5 announced gaming card ever made on the market. Obviously, it doesn't matter because nobody's saturating the PCI Express 4.0 bandwidth, although I always dislike that argument of, well, it's not saturating it, which you don't want it to saturate it because at that point it's a bottleneck. Like you do want to have headroom It like having it only take up 50% is kind of the point where you're like, okay, let's move on to the next one. So saturating PCI Express 3.0 is something that can certainly happen with the highest end cards. It's not something we have to worry about with 4.0 right now, but we will eventually. So we're just getting ahead of the curve, but don't worry, PCI Express 6.0 has already been announced. It's in testing and will come out sometime soon. But again, the gaming side of things, for the S80 showed off League of Legends and Need for Speed. Not benchmarks, nothing really uh, detailed coming out, but this does appear to be China's entry into trying to get away from Western cards. NVIDIA, AMD, Intel, they don't want to have to depend on that, especially as trade wars heighten between the US and China, them coming up with their own designs that allow them to actually be self-sustaining in the gaming department is something that they're looking at doing, and this S80 80 is one of the key steps to that. So while this might not enter into your GPU anytime at all ever, it is a monumental step that's going to be taking place that's going to shift the dynamics of where parts are being sold and also brings in added competition where Nvidia, AMD, and Intel are not just going to be competing amongst themselves. They have this added pressure that's going to take place in the international market, which could potentially lead to better products for the consumers even here on Western shores. But Morse Threads also showing off a few other GPUs. You got a data center one, which can do 15.2 teraflops, 32 gigs of VRAM. It's a it's a decent setup. Again, this is not important for you personally. It's important in the global grand scheme of things, which I thought was pretty interesting. So did I think back when I saw AMD's Project Quantum, this thing is a gorgeous looking design for a mini PC that AMD showed off in 2015 with a freaking Intel processor and some Fiji graphics cards. But what you're looking at right now is not AMD's version of it. This is actually a fan-made version that was actually produced 
by Stand Up Gamer. We'll have a link in the video description for you to check out their video, but they essentially 3D printed and designed it themselves using an ASRock STX motherboard, created a whole like, it's a lightweight gaming system, kind of not necessarily meant for heavy duty gaming like a Fiji card would be, but AMD abandoning this project effectively. We talked about it in an episode of Hot News back in 2020 because there was a patent that came out about it and it looked like they might actually do it. I don't know, I would love to see it. I love innovative designs like this. I love it when we get back to just like really cool ways of having PC products, which is something that I really like about ASRock's new motherboard, the B650 Live Mixer that we built our PC on Friday with. It has personality, it has pizzazz. It's not gonna fit in every PC build, but I wanna get back to the days where there's like room in the PC market for some eccentricity and coolness and designs. But I don't wanna be at the place where we're melting our PC products like Nvidia is doing. And it's coming out that Gainward, as far as I'm aware, is the first GPU manufacturer to announce that they're actually gonna be offering replacements for the GPU cables that actually ship with the graphics cards because it does appear to be a cable issue for the adapter. In yesterday's episode of Hot News, we talked about how there are some power supplies that seem to be actually melting. So it does seem to be if the cables are not done according to specification from how it's supposed to be, then there's a risk of melting. And so Gainward's actually gonna be replacing them. It doesn't seem like Nvidia actually needs to do a recall on the graphics cards, but what I would like to see is something that they just have a portal that you go to and you order a two spec 16 pin adapter that you can confirm is the crimp style, not the soldered style, and you're not afraid of it melting your new 1700 to $2,000 toy. That should just be an easy way of doing it. And I mean, who needs that besides the people who bought a 4090? Obviously there's like some room for abuse, but they should just make it free to whoever requests it. That's my thought. What are your thoughts? I thought about crypto stonks. We'll still do it. Bitcoin down 1.72% to be at 20 and a half thousand. Ethereum down half a percent to be at 1562. And Dogecoin down 3.7%, continuing its slide to be at just over 11 cents. And Reese isn't just over UFD deals. He's got a lot of them coming up, especially because of the Black Friday deal. Reese talked about the new egg thing yesterday. So let's see what he has for us today. Yo, welcome back to UFD deals. We're bringing the hottest tech deals out on the internet. In the best possible news, I'm absolutely swamped with deals today. So I'll only be able to give you the honorable mentions. Like this one terabyte it's the Brent Rocket Q4 NVMe M.2 SSD going for only $89.99, which is 55% off. And if you thought the Ryzen 5 5600 going for $135 was a deal, then check out the 5600G going for only $106.99, which is the whole 59% off. And on the power front, we have a full stack of power supplies from Superflower and Nian Lee, ranging all the way from 650 watts to 1000 watts, 80 plus gold to 80 plus titanium and everything in between. So hopefully you'll find something there like this Lian Lee SP750 small form factor power supply going for only $97.99, which is the whole 24% off and the perfect combo to this Lian Q58 Mini ITX case. With a split mesh and tempered glass design, this thing is gorgeous, going for only $127. And don't forget, you can find all these deals and more by going to ufd.deals. I'll leave a link for you in the description. And with that, back to the hot news. Thanks, buddy. That was great. You know what else is great? Video game adaptation series that come to Netflix, which Edge Runners, Arcane, two pretty good ones. I'm sure there's bad ones that are out there, but I don't wanna talk about that right now. Netflix is making a Gears of War series that is gonna be coming out sometime soon. I'm announcing it for the 16th anniversary of it. They've got a live action feature film and an adult animated series planned for Gears of War. So if you're a fan of that series, Netflix actually might do right by it. They've actually done a pretty decent job when it comes to video game ad adaptations in the animated series type stuff. I don't know about the live action thing. I wouldn't miss necessarily trust that. You never trust an ISP who says that they're not gonna throttle you and they're giving you unlimited data because even the best of them will fall by the wayside. Starlink gonna be the next casualty in the war of unlimited data, them announcing a one terabyte data priority cap, meaning that if you want full speed access, you can only get that up to one terabyte, but then you get relegated down to basic access. This only qualifies during 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. and you can also pay for additional capacity on the priority access in case you want that, which 
which is 25 cents per gigabyte, which would be more expensive than you just buying a second Starlink dish and switching over to that one once you hit your one terabyte cap for the month. Additionally, there's like a bit more complication depending on like which version of Starlink you have, Maritime, the regular one, the RV access one, there's a whole slew of different ways that that's gonna work. But even though Starlink tried to provide unlimited data for its users, it's just not gonna happen. They don't have the bandwidth, which I just, I get. As long as it's not like, what cellular carriers do where they throttle you down to like 2G speeds afterwards because that's just like unusable. That's like you have no internet access at that point as long as it's like, okay, no, you're getting, you're gonna get a decent amount of bandwidth. It's not gonna be full speed, but you're gonna get, you know, 30 megabits. That's tolerable. I would like to see that. I don't know what the exact number is, but I do appreciate a basic access that would not be something that's completely and utterly not worth having in the first place. Which is not this next thing I'm gonna talk about. ASRock showing off a Z790 motherboard. The Z790 PG Sonic, my friends. It's a Sonic the Hedgehog inspired Intel motherboard, which I mean, it, Sonic Frontiers launched today, which I, it, from what I've gathered, it's a good Sonic game, it is a bad video game. However, if you've been waiting for a great Sonic game to come out, Frontiers might be the best bet. It's 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 a bit weird, I don't know, but this is gonna be the perfect motherboard for you to pair with it, ASRock launching that. I love to see this. Again, this is just like personality, some pizzazz. Does it fit with everybody? No, but it's got a lot of gumption and I like to see that. And it does look like the 4080's got a lot of gumption. New benchmarks coming out for this unreleased card. We're expecting to get that in just under a week, but the 4080 showing up in some Geekbench as well as some other benchmarks. What we're seeing is that in Geekbench, it's roughly 45% faster than the 3080 in the CUDA test, 37% faster in OpenCL, 30 percent faster in Vulcan and between 5 and 15.5 percent faster than the 3090 Ti, which I mean is at least an upgrade to some extent that CUDA is really where you're seeing the biggest improvement at 45 percent, which is not terrible generation on generation from the 4080 to the 3080. Time spy score is also showing up and what we see is that they're actually also pretty decent scores between 50 to 54 percent faster than the 3080 12 gig, which is the fastest version of the RT. X 3080. And so if we're looking at benchmarks in that regard, that does look like it's a huge generational uplift. 50% is nothing to sneeze at. However, you are looking at more than a 50% price increase. So it's kind of garbage in that regard. It's kind of stupid. However, if you compare it to the 3090 Ti, it's 32% faster than that. And therefore it's slightly cheaper by 800 bucks compared to the original MSRP. It's bad. No matter how you slice it, I'm trying to find some sort of reasoning to be like, okay, it's not, it's not horrendous. But in, Nvidia's pricing on this, the 4090 at 1600 bucks, I can, I can sensify that because it's the flagship, right? Like you're always the price to performance never makes sense on the best card on the market. It's just, it's not for the people who have money sense. It's for the people who want to go fast. But if you have money sense, you should be looking at something like the 60 or 70 class card. And it doesn't look like Nvidia is going to even be close to reasonable with those this generation. And that's probably where my sticking points come in. Not in the flagship one, they could charge, you know, 4,500 dollars for it and I would just be like that's what you're paying to get the best so it's like if there's no card that's faster than that they can charge whatever they want in order to get it to get the fastest on the market and you, you don't have to buy it okay you can buy the reasonable thing the 7900 XTX at a thousand dollars or hopefully something like a 7600 XT which would be like RTX 3090 Ti level performance. One man can dream I want more reasonable priced on GPUs and the, the mid-tier that's what I want to see. And I want to see you back here tomorrow for more hot news because we'll allegedly be doing it then.